Hey everybody, and on today's vlog, we are playing Harry Potter House Cup Competition by the OP Games. 20 points for Gryffindor! Hello, Sarah. So what are we going to be playing today on our vlog? Today we are playing um, Harry Potter House Cup Competition from the OP Games. Um, it is a competitive worker placement um, game set in the Harry Potter universe, which I don't know a whole lot about. I've never read any of the books or watched the movies or anything like that. Um, but it seems to uh, revolve around sort of a fictional house cup competition, which is going on. I don't know if anything like that ever happened in the in the books or the movies or anything like it that. It does. But... It's just... I think it was like the first book. Now I could be wrong because I've only seen the movies. Uh, the first ones where they kind of like do a highlight of, of it. Now. Okay. So it revolves around like this house cup competition that is taking place amongst the various Harry Potter houses or the houses that are established in the Harry Potter universe. Um, so we each uh, gain control over house. I'm the Slytherin house and you're the Ravenclaw house. Ravenclaw. And so um, we each get three students that um, are, are sort of in our house that we're going to be using to um, gain resources and knowledge and sort of compete in the competition. So what happens is each of our students, I'm not going to be able to hold this up super well because it's got a lot of moving pieces going on, but each of our students has a portion of this board here that shows their... Um, various um, stats. Yeah, basically like their um, knowledge in each of these three different sort of categories. So there's like um, there's like a strength category and then some kind of like mysticism category and then um, like a magic category. So these markers here move up every time a character increases in any one of their knowledge. Um, so these stats... Or levels of yeah. So these stats will move up as the characters gain more and more knowledge and experience. <laughs> Level up. <laughs> and then we'll be using the various characters' um, knowledge and experience to try to complete some challenges. So we, um, what happens is each round of the game, there are seven rounds, and each round of the game is devised, divided into two um, portions. The first portion is like the worker placement portion. So we take each of our three workers and one per turn we place them into various areas on the board in order to um, be able to move these um, sort of sliders, get like, and that signifies learning things in different classes, or to gain um, resources that might help us um, get things accomplished as well. So we take our workers um, once per turn and we place them into one of the locations on the board in order to um, get lesson cards, which are gonna help us advance our characters and gain points. We'll put them in various locations to um, get the challenge cards into our hand. Um, and then we'll also place them to gain um, level ups on this board here and then also to gain these resources here. Once um, every player has placed all three of their students, we'll go to the next phase of the round, which will be to attempt to complete the challenges that we've gained in our hand. So um, during this portion of the game, players can attempt to complete up to two easy challenges or one easy challenge and one hard challenge. Um, in order to complete the challenges, your characters need to have these levels. So if I wanted to complete uh, this easy challenge here, between one or more of my characters, I would need at least six sort of points of the cauldrons um, across my board here. Like I said, I can use more than one character if I don't have a character that has six, but if maybe two of my characters working together would total at least six, then I could use two or more um, characters to complete this challenge here. Like I said, you can do up to two easy or one easy and one hard challenge every round of the game. You gain various rewards for doing this, but a lot of the rewards are centered around these sort of crystals here. And these are kind of the main point of the game because these are like victory points. So here, if I complete this easy challenge, 
um, I would gain three. I know it says 30, but you'd only gain three these are of worth these crystals here. Ten. Yep, because so they're worth 10 each. And what you do is you take them and you put them into this little vial over here. And then at the end of the game, whoever has the most wins. Ooh. The game lasts for seven rounds. And um, at every even numbered round, we'll reveal a new location that will become available for players to put their, their students in um, and gain uh, even more benefits and abilities. However, most of these like sort of higher level locations are going to require a minimum of um, sort of skill in one or more areas. <laughs> Um, so those are going to be something that we kind of have to work towards. Um, so yeah, so we play through the seven rounds. At the end of seven rounds, whoever's accumulated the most points wins the game. Very cool. I've got the whole girl squad over here, so we're going to kick some some behind. And then we got the the, the boys. We've got House Slytherin over here. I don't know, like I said, I don't know a ton about um, the Harry Potter universe, but I know that Slytherins are pretty much either like universally hated or universally misunderstood, I guess, depending on where you uh, fall based on like allegiance to House Slytherin. Um, I'm fine with it. I think we're gonna maybe kick some butt in this House Cup competition. So yeah, let's let's get to it. Let's Better cry face. from Ravenclaw. I got, <laughs> got Luna Lovegood over here. I, I have um, Draco Malfoy. He seems... <laughs> He seems a bit like an angsty teenager, but we'll see. We'll see if he's able to pull off. Some we'll see if he's scrappy. Magical spells or something. All right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and get into our game of the Harry Potter House Cup competition. We hope you all get excited and stick around for what we have to say about this game from the OP. And let's get into it. All right. Toodles. Hello, Wizard and Queen. How goes that? It seems to be going. We're, um, there are seven rounds, so we're a little bit more than halfway through. We're at the start of round four. Um, we've both been able to complete some challenges. We've both been able to score some points. Um, we've got our characters are well on their way to, well, mine are. I don't know what you're doing over there, slacker. But, hey, um, hey, hey, hey. I've got, I've got one slacker. Uh, <laughs> she collects the magic. And everyone, she's, everyone she's my, she's my it. resource farmer <laughs> and, uh, everyone else is the one that are hitting the books and learning to complete other things. So there's a method to the madness. What do you think so far? Uh, I like it. I am not always, uh, excited about, uh, IP games, even if it's an IP yeah. that I, I like. Yeah. Cause um, I, I think that this is actually some of the mechanics behind this game are actually pretty cool. Um, but like, I don't, I don't care about Harry Potter at all. So the theme, I feel like the theme is, is pretty Oh yeah, it's good. pretty spot on. I don't know much about Harry Potter, but it seems like there's a lot of theme here. There's, there's a ton of stuff that it seems like it comes directly from the source material. So yeah. I think that they did a really good job with that. But like, if you don't care about Harry Potter, then like that stuff isn't really valuable to you. But the game itself, like the mechanics behind the game, it's pretty fun. So I kind of wish... It was a more generic yeah. theme. After we kind of but... rolled through the rule book and we're like picking and mining at it. <laughs> yeah, the rule book could use a little work. Um, it's it's okay, but there are some areas that they could have just expounded a little bit more. Um, um, the the components are all like nice enough. I think that um, some of these this is kind of dorky. Uh, you, it, they just like sit in this little track and you move them as you like gain levels and stuff like that. Yeah, there, there are um, a lot of board games that have that like, kind of thing where if yeah, you boop it like a space space, or, oh yeah. my gosh, that's like, that's terrible. So I don't, I'm not. This is actually better than space space because it has somewhat of a little yeah, groove. Yeah, a little track, yeah. So I'm not super fond of that, but otherwise the components are really nice. Um, I, I think that this is a little bit extra. These are, so the way that the scoring works in the game is that um, when you score, you like if you that. score 10 or more points, for every 10 points that you score, you take a crystal and you put it into your little vial over here. And then at the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins. I think it's a little extra. They could have done something a little bit less 
flashy um, to keep track of the score, but I also think it's pretty um, cool. It's thematic, yeah. It's got a neat sort of toy factor. Some cool to table it. presence. Yeah, right it's there. got some, some neat table presence. And the one thing that I think is really cool about that is that the game comes with these corks. So when you're finished, you just cork. Well, let me take it out so I'm not pushing on that. You just cork this. And then that's it. You can just toss it right in the box, and that's how you store um, store this part. So I think that that's really cool. It is nice. Um, plus, it it just it looks neat, and it captures that sort of feel of like a a scoreboard, like a competition sort of scoreboard, you know, um, where you can see like one team against another. The score is constantly, you know, um, you know, sort of like ever changing and yeah, exactly. fluctuating but yeah. at least you kind of know where you're at you and don't it, exactly know yeah and it feels a little bit more thematic scoreboard wise to do something like this than i think it, if it would have been like just a regular standard sort of track you know? yeah so yeah there's some neat stuff going on um it is very very heavily harry potter so if you like harry potter awesome you should check this out especially if you like worker placement games um if you're if not, you're absolutely against harry potter then maybe yeah. the theme will just get eat, hook you up too much it's but still if you a, can, it's still a really neat worker placement yeah game. if you can get past the theme yeah. i mean there's just some cool things and within the game there's nothing that you can about do the theme that's like prohibitive right it's not like it's not like i'm like well i don't know anything about harry potter so there's something about this theme that makes it hard for me to approach this game it's not even like that it's just that it's like well i could take or leave the theme um, so it's not even a prohibitive theme if you don't know anything about Harry Potter. I just think that if you like Harry Potter, the theme is probably much more valuable to you than if you don't care one way or the other about Harry Potter. Um, but it's neat. It's got some neat stuff going on. I like the, the leveling up your character is pretty cool. It's a little challenging to be able to do it. You have to kind of manage your resources appropriately in order to actually level up your character. It's and also like complete can... certain challenges, mm -hmm. and yeah. but to give those to get those challenges to complete them. I mean, I've got one character over here that's just you know she's still at one one one, but also she's not totally useless. She's also you know that characters just because they have one at each level, they still can hit that uh that. Uh, requirement when I need to do yeah when I need to do a challenge more than one character so even the characters that aren't very high level yet they can still add their stats to the required sort of um, you know the requirements to the challenge yeah so yeah I think that there's some neat things going on I think that there are I, I like the mechanics. Um, I think that it's fun. It's interesting. Even even if I don't know anything about Harry Potter, it still sort of captures that feel of like a wizarding school. Yeah. And even some of the places that come out within the game are uh, uh, like called what, you know, they're named what they're named in the book. So even if you don't know anything about it, you're like, oh, this could be cool. This looks cool. That's an interesting name. Or if you're just, <laughs> just really struggling with the theme, you're just like, okay, well, that's nice. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I think there's some cool things going on. Um, like I said, we're a little more than halfway through the game. I feel like I'm doing pretty good. It's a little hard to tell. Who's yeah, that's that's kind of right nice now. though. It's it's hard to tell, but I think, I think you I might, might be maybe ten or twenty. Yeah, points I really ahead think right you, yeah, same. Um, but we still have uh, this round plus three more to go, so yeah. it's still anybody's game. So still four rounds total to to kind of figure out who will who will get what and who will be the house cup champion where there'll be ravenclaw or slytherin <laughs> all right well let's get back into it because this is fun and uh let's go ahead and see who gets to the to, to be the wiener and <laughs> it sounds like you're getting that's that's a little ominous right there you're like dun well, dun 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 kind of like sneaky boys right they're like sneaky boys know you know there are like... girls in slytherin they're oh, just well, not the main characters are girls no they're not they're like main character stuff but i got all the girls over here we're representing over here yeah, so you got, like, ooh, power ooh, team. Ooh. i do have a power team led by luna lovegood and i'm uh draco malfoy You're led by the malfoys the boy needs to get some sun he is pale. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get back into it and figure out who is the wiener and loser. All right. Toodles. Hello, wizard master. We are the champions. champions my friends. I win, I win. 
He is a wiener. So, what'd you get? I had 37 points. How many points did you have? You had 38. I, I had 37. 30. That's what it was. Yep. I lost by one stinking point. The um, points are tracked in these little tubes over here, which is really cool. And you can kind of see it looked like I had more than Nick, but we were pretty close, so we counted anyway. And yep, just one point. Oh, that was so... Such a close game. <laughs> I, in the last round, I sent my boys to a couple of locations to just get points. I went here and here, and that got me three crystals. And then I was also able to finish uh, a hard challenge, which got me another six crystals. Nice. Um, so I had a pretty solid last round. Um, but even so, it was still a very close game. Yeah, if I would have gotten to one of those places to get points. Ugh. <laughs> ugh, Sarah, ugh. I really like, um, how this one felt like once you knew what you were doing, everything, like, when everything came together, it felt really, um, rewarding. It felt like, you know, I've planned everything out, things are going exactly the way I need them to, and... If Nick goes here, he could interrupt my plans, but like then I could go over here and do this. And it would there was a, a nice, pleasant feeling of 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 everything working the way that I wanted it to. And um, you don't always get that in games, but when you do, to me, it's especially satisfying. So I really liked that about the game. I also um, just liked the general mechanics of it. Um, it's essentially it's a worker placement game with a little bit of resource management mixed in. Um, and it was fun. It was a lot of fun to like collect the resources required um, to level up your characters and then to sort of translate that into, um, you know, doing things to actually get the points. Um, I actually thought that it was a, a really fun game. And of all of the games that the OP sent us um, to review on the channel, and we've done Several already, they're already up, um, and then we have a few more left to go. Uh, but of all of them that we've done for the OP... Thus far. Thus far, this one has been my favorite, like, by far. Um, I think, and I don't, like I said at the beginning of the video, I don't know anything about the Harry Potter universe. I don't really care about the Harry Potter universe. Um, so to me, the theme in this one is just kind of like, take it or leave it. Um, and... Even so, I still really, really enjoyed this game. So, Awesome. Yeah, I really, uh, you know, I was, uh, I, I get nervous sometimes about IP games because uh, sometimes they're not the greatest uh, piece of content that comes out. But in this case, it, I really enjoyed it. It was a, it was a nice hobby game when it kind of masked as being like some kind of like, Oh, you like Harry Potter? Come play this board game. Oh, look! You're addicted to board games now! You shall have many board games behind you and get all, and you know, continually buying and then you'll be just, you know, having the greatest time in your life. I thought initially that this was maybe um, a little bit flashy and not necessarily necessary. Um... Sometimes with games that you can kind of fall into like a, a design sort of area where you're doing things just because it would be cool, not necessarily because it enhances the design in any way. Um, so this is very thematic, I think. It's, uh, it's nice to be able to just, like I said earlier, just put the stopper in it and store the contents that way. So that's really cool. So there is some usefulness to this, but essentially I felt like this was kind of a... Um, kind of an extra that wasn't really necessary but one thing that it did facilitate that I really really appreciated in the gameplay was that you never quite knew how many points anybody had um, and I, I don't always like that but in this particular game I think it worked well to help everything continue to move uh, smoothly and um, you know it helped players to keep from having too much analysis paralysis um, just because you could not figure out exactly what you needed to win, right? So I think um, while this is a little flashier than necessary, maybe I do think that it does actually do some important things for the game. 
Um, plus it just looks really cool. So definitely. Awesome. Well, this is our vlog of the of Harry Potter and uh, Harry Potter and the House Cup or the House Cup competition. And yeah, Ravenclaw lost to, to the Slytherin. Slytherin, the bad boys. But uh, but yeah, we hope you all enjoyed this vlog. Stay tuned for our upcoming content. It is going to be awesome as always. All right, if you're not already by any chance, go hit that subscribe button. And until January 5th, 2021, we have an amazing contest sort of giveaway thing going on on the channel where we're giving away uh, a dozen games, With tons promos. of promos, all kinds of cool stuff. It's absolutely free to enter. Um, so subscribe to the channel. And go. We'll go subs subscribe to the channel and then we'll link it at the end of this video. For the giveaway. Uh, for the giveaway. It'll be like somewhere over here. Check so it out because we want to give away tons of games. We want to give away a bunch of promos. And you could win if you are subscribed to the channel and you follow the directions in that video. Yes. So. Indeed. All right. Well, toodles.